Hi everybody, welcome back to Charming Data. I hope you had a happy holiday, a good time with your family, and that you had some delicious, delicious food. Some of you asked me, um, Adam, can you please show us how to create um, a sidebar um, in, in Dash Plotly, so when you click on certain links, it will take you to different pages on the URL. This is all possible with Dash Plotly in pure Python. And thanks to um, Victor de Venezuela, now I can create this tutorial for you. Gracias, Victor. All right, so um, to follow along, well, first of all, what we're gonna go over, I created the Jupyter um, Dash um, file um, so you can see that as well. I created, well, I didn't create this. This is mostly from the Bootstrap code. You'll see this with HTML div. And we'll also go over pure Bootstrap with the DBC card. So we'll add a Bootstrap card here and we'll see how this remains fixed no matter the sidebar, no matter how much you move it, right? So we're gonna go all over this code today. Um, to start, if you want access to this code right here, which is the first thing we're going to go over, go into the GitHub below the video. And in there, um, you'll see the, the code um, uh, link, which is this one right here, right? Go to sidebar and then just copy everything you see in here um, and open your PyCharm, your Spider, your VS Code, and just paste everything in there and it should work, right? Just run it and it should work. If you want access to, I put uh, Jupyter Lab um, code and the dash bootstrap code inside um, GitLab. This is this is for people who are um, supporting uh, this channel and supporting this um, these tutorial that I'm making. Um, um, so uh, hit the support button uh, through Patreon or through um, your YouTube membership, and you'll have access to all of this. And thank you. All right, so um, let's do this. The first thing is the sidebar. So you downloaded the code from GitHub, and now we're gonna go into our PyCharm, and we are going to look over this. So this code is mainly taken from, almost all of it, or most of it is taken from the people at Bootstrap that built it, this is the, the link. Um, I added some data and a few other things, and I'm gonna show you line by line um, uh, what everything means and how this is created. All right, so the first thing, obviously, if you don't have Dash, you need these libraries. And these libraries include um, three different things. They include pip install Dash, and they include pip install uh, Pandas, and lastly, you'll have to install Dash, H, uh, dash Booster Components, uh, pip install this, all right? Just make sure that it's uh, um, this way instead of the underscore, all right? Okay, uh, next thing we're gonna read the data that's on the GitHub, on my GitHub, into a pandas data frame. Um, this data is, data is on um, students from uh, Iran in each, in kindergarten or in school, grad school or in high school to see how many we have. And it's taken from um, Kaggle. So read the information in there. Um, then we're gonna uh, use a bootstrap theme um, starter app and now we're going to go into styling let's skip this styling for now we'll do this later um, and let's jump to uh, line 35 so in line 35 we see that we have we're creating an object a sidebar object that we're going to use later in the layout we'll just copy paste this inside the layout but for now we're just going to create it um, as an HTML div right and it's going to be a list of different things inside of it the first thing is going to be the h2 sidebar so it's right right this where you see that um, text the class name is going to be display 4 this is from the bootstrap cheat sheet you can change this to um, display 3 or display 2 and see how the size of the font changes then we have a horizontal line which is this line right here and then we have an HTML uh, P where you can put some strings, just a regular like paragraph, which is this, right? Um, and then we're, we are creating the, the nav, the nav component, all right? The nav component um, typically has, the children has nav links. And inside the nav links, we're gonna put three links, home, page one, and page two. Home, page one, and page two. They're each gonna have this um, ending to the URL the href page one or just a slash and then you have the active parameter active parameter is what makes this look active right um, so if I'm in home right now you see it's active because it's blue all around and the text is white and this is not this text is um, is is uh, blue instead of white so 
active, it has exact, it has true, or it has false. Um, go into this link below the video. I'm going to add this link as well. This is the nav um, bar from Bootstrap. And you'll see if we look for exact, you'll see that uh, they have uh, three different options for active. There is um, exact, and there is true, and there is false. Exact just means that um, the app will automatically set the active property when the path name matches the href. So it's, it's, it's saying a lot, uh, and we'll see that later, how what that means. But what it really means to briefly is that whenever a tab here or a link is active, um, this will automatically recognize it with exact because we put that string in there. Okay, and then we're going to say, um, we close the, um, inside the, the nav component, we're gonna say the pills are true. Pills is what gives this, this long blue kind of a thing, right, instead of just a link. And then vertical, true, because you want it to be vertical as opposed to horizontal, all right? And then we're gonna style it. And you see the style is the sidebar style object that we created here, which is really a dictionary. Right, sidebar style object from, from line 18 to 25. You'll see that we created a position fixed, right? And um, this position fixed that the coders put, um, it just means that if you change this, the this is gonna be fixed. It's not, it's not becoming smaller or larger like the graph is. That's the position fixed. And then we have width is 16 REMs, which is this width right here. The padding is two REMs from top, so there's space on top, and then one REM on the right, so there's space right here. And then we have the color, which is this gray light color that you have. All right, so this styling um, uh, dictionary is inside uh, is assigned to the style component of the um, of the of the nav component. All right, the style parameter of the nav component right here. All right. Oh, sorry. Not not the nav. This is not to the nav. This is to the um, the div, right? This is refers to the whole div, the style of the whole div. All right. The next thing is we have our sidebar. Now we have to create all our uh, content in here, and the content, as you can see, is just an HTML div. It's going to have an ID. The children is going to be empty. It's gonna, not going to have anything at the beginning, and then it's going to have some style. So um, what's going to go inside this content, like inside this children, is going to be the content. What's going to go inside this children. And this is, you'll see in the callback, you'll, you'll see all this, that how it goes inside those, that children parameter to actually create content. All right. Um, and the styling is, uh, again, here, it's the content style. It just margin left 18 REMs means that there's going to be 18 um, REM between the left side and the graph or this this HTML div and it's uh, margin right there's going to be two on the right side and there's padding just like we had padding on the sidebar two and one so there's two on top and one on the right one unit um, all right so we have our sidebar we have our empty content there's nothing in there yet and we're just going to put this inside the layout we're going to have a sidebar, um, a content, uh, and this DCC location is what it's it's a hidden component that's going to read the the path or the URL of the browser right here. All right, but it's important that it's hidden. You don't you, nobody can see it. And now we're going to create on line 64. We're going to create the callback, and this callback is what identifies what link we're on, and based on that link, um, creates content for the, um, that, um, that part of the page, right? For this one, the children, all right? So let's see how that goes. What we're saying is we're gonna take the path name of the URL component. The URL ID component is this. Well, no, sorry, URL, this one right here, right? So here path is actually, path name is actually empty. There's no path name. Well, actually path name equals this, right? Um, why why does it equal this path name actually equals this right now because as let's let's show you I'm running this this is the sidebar let's go to the sidebar you'll see that this is the link right to create that that will show us the, the app on the browser and it ends 
with a slash. You see this slash right here, it ends with this slash. So it's automatically, it automatically has this slash, right? So automatically when I, let's actually restart this. When I load the page, it's gonna return all this. And we'll see, because by default, the, the path name is this at the beginning. Let's open this and see what happens. This is the kindergarten in Iran. And oops, oh, because I saved it. So this is essentially what we have if you first, if you load it for the first time, you'll get kindergarten Iran, this first page, because this is, is exactly like having a slash right here. It's the same thing. All right, so what are we doing? We're actually taking the path name of this URL and we're gonna say, do something with it. And whatever you do, return, you return the children of the page content. So whatever you return, this list here, or this list here, or this list here, actually goes into the children of the page content. So it goes into this children of the page content of this HTML div, right? That's why um, all this content is here to the right of the page. So we're saying, take the path name, and if the path name equals a slash, which it does at the very first time the, the app is loaded, if it equals slash, return, let's see what we return, return an HTML H1, just, just a title, kindergarten in Iran, and put it in the center of the graph, so it's, it will return this right in the middle. And then I return a graph that's gonna have um, an ID, which we don't necessarily use right now, and we're gonna create a figure, a uh, uh, plotly express bar chart that has a bar mode group, um, the years, well, it's using the data frame that we uh, we called above from the very top. It's using this data frame, right, from the GitHub of all the students. Um, and it's going to take the X is going to be the years and the Y is going to be girl a list of girls or and boys. So you see um, the Y is going to be um, two different traces of girls and boys, girls and boys in blue and in red. So this is what we're doing with um, the bar graph. Now we're saying um, if if the path name is page one, and why would it be page one slash page one? The path the path name would be page one because if we click on this, you'll see that it becomes page one. And why is that? Because I'm saying here that the nav link is h uh, the 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 h r e f um, attribute is actually um, slash page one, which means that if I click on this. The, the location is going to be recognized as path name slash page h1, all right? And if that is uh, the, the path name, then we actually create a different list similar to this one, but now the title is grad school instead of kindergarten, and the bar graph um, is actually the same, but we're having uh, the, y, the y axis is grade school instead of kindergarten. Same thing with page two. Um, if I click on this um, link, this little um, pill of the nav link will be called nav2. You see, href is called nav2, um, which will be identified by the, U, the location as path name. Let's just show you. This is what would happen. It will actually be identified as, as page 2. This is what would happen if we clicked on it. And if that path name is page 2, what we're saying if, if, if path name is page two, then return a different content. Return a list of um, this title of high schools, the same bar graph, but a different Y axis of high school and high, uh, boys and girls in high school. Now, if the user tries to reach a different page, if there's anything else, like, right, there's no, it's not page two, it's not page one, or it's not this, if it's anything else after the 3000, um, then um, then it's going to return this jumbotron, which is a, the dash bootstrap component with an error and this string in there, all right? So you can see if we go here and if we try page three that doesn't exist, it's gonna return this error, not found. If we try slash um, whatever uh, me, you hit enter, is going to return this error because it's not one of the elif statements, all right? So this is how you create um, a sidebar. This is how you create the links and make links into pages 
um, in a very, very fast way with Dash Plotly, um, all in Python. Um, let's go over, uh, in case you're interested, I'm gonna go over the Bootstrap. So you see how to do it in Bootstrap. Bootstrap is very similar um, to the code um, here that, that um, the people in Bootstrap um, um, created. Uh, the difference between um, the Bootstrap uh, version is that it's inside a Bootstrap card. You see this? It's a little bit different than how this looks like. So it depends on what you prefer, all right? So to build this in Bootstrap, what we're going to do in this code, you'll see we'll uh, import other libraries. Again, call the data. You make sure to, to uh, call the Bootstrap theme or assign it. And now instead of the sidebar, instead of HTML div, we're using the Bootstrap card. And inside the card body, we have exactly the same thing. We have the HTML, the sidebar, the nav links, everything is the same, vertical. But here, as part of the card itself, we're going to say the color is going to be light. So this is this grayish color is light. And we're gonna say the style height is going to be 100 VH, meaning that it's gonna be all the way from all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, this gray color. The width is going to be 16 REMs like before, 16, and the position is going to be fixed so it doesn't move um, if we, it doesn't shrink if we actually shrink the, the screen. And the content is also very similar. It's going to be an HTML div, but instead of everything, we just have this um, padding that's uh, two REMs from the top. So there's some space on the top here. And then we go to the layout. Again, layout is very similar. We have the, uh, well, actually the layout is different, my mistake. The layout here, if you can recall, was an HTML div and a sidebar and a content. Here, we're gonna have, we're gonna put everything inside a container, add this hidden location, URL, path name, and then we're gonna put everything in a row and in columns, right? So we'll say everything is going to be in one row, but the sidebar is going to be in two columns to the left, and then the rest, the content is going to be in nine columns to the right with a margin of 16 um, REMs. So if you do shrink it, um, it doesn't necessarily overlap, it doesn't go over this whole graph, doesn't go over the sidebar. Um, there's still some styling you can add to this to make it look better, but this is the basic styling. And then fluid true right here, the fluid parameter of the container just means that there's no space on the left or on the right of the app. Change this to false and see what happens. All right, and here, I don't think there's a need to repeat. Um, if you do have questions from how this callback works under YouTube, go to the comments, ask me those questions, and I'll be more than happy to um, answer you. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this tutorial, um, hit the like button, subscribe below, and uh, definitely show your support. Go to my Patreon. Uh, you can support me with like one cup of coffee a month. That's like $3 a month or more if you want a free consultation. And obviously you'll get code to um, this extra code uh, with uh, Jupyter um, Dash um, code in it and with uh, Bootstrap code in it. Um, I guess that's it. I'll see you, I'll see you next week. Have a good uh, have a good weekend.